Hello, I'm James Clark from the Department of Physiology at King's College London. And in this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the functionality of a software system called OBS. OBS is designed for streaming video podcasts and webinars and things like that, but could also be used for recording. And I'm going to show you how we can use it to record dynamic presentations using PowerPoint and other video resources. So what is OBS and how do you use it? Well, OBS is open source. You can download it for free, and I've put the website on the screen in front of you. OBS allows you to set up different scenes, which you can use for streaming or recording locally, which can contain different types of media, such as screen capture, webcam, video, audio, or images. Of course, OBS is designed for live internet streaming and has a host more functions than perhaps one might want to use for education. But I'm going to show you a few little nifty tips and tricks that you can use OBS for, for creating dynamic video content for teaching. So let's quickly look at the OBS interface. Here it is on the screen in front of you, and at the moment this is essentially the default settings when you load it up for the first time on your computer. You'll see down the left hand side you have a list of scenes. At the moment we only have one scene, but you can simply add more scenes by clicking on the plus button, delete scenes by clicking on the minus button, and reorder your scenes in different orders using the move up and move down button. We'll create a few scenes in a minute and you'll see how we use them. In the second little window called sources, you can add media to each of your scenes. So for instance, scene one might just be your logo. Scene two might be your webcam. Scene three might be a combination of a PowerPoint presentation, for instance, and a webcam. And you can set up multiple sources in each of your scenes and seamlessly transition between them. In the next little window, we have the audio mixer. This is really just for reference purposes when you're doing your recordings, but it's nice to see little meters dancing around when you're speaking so you know what volume you're recording at. Next to audio mixer is the scene transitions window, and this allows you to seamlessly move between different scenes. The default transition is a fade, and the default duration is 300 milliseconds, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then on the far right hand side, there are five quite important buttons. There's the start streaming button, and this only works if you have a streaming account online, like a YouTube channel, and you can then stream whatever you have on the screen remotely. But we're not thinking about using that today. We're going to be thinking more about the recording function, which is the second button. Underneath there we have a rather complicated thought called studio mode, and this is when you're setting up live broadcasts, you might want multiple cameras and be able to preview what's coming up. The all important settings button allows you to configure the software to work with your computer, and of course exit takes you out of the software. So let's look at the scenes. Over here we have our first scene called scene. If you right click on this and choose rename, I'm going to rename this KCL logo and then click off. I want to add my logo to this scene, so in the sources section I click on plus. When I click on plus you'll see a whole load of options appear beneath. Since we are importing an image, we choose image. I'm going to create a new image and call it logo and then I'm going to select from my desktop, the file. The file is my KCL red logo. And press OK. By default, the logo will fill the presentation window, but by clicking on one of the corners, you can scale this to fit wherever you like on your window. Let's put it there in the center. So now we've set up our first scene, and our first scene is to show our King's College logo. Maybe I want to have another scene as well, and this time I'm going to show a short video. I can now click on the plus button and make a new scene, and I'm going to call this video. And we have no sources for our second scene, so we're going to choose, this time not an image, but a media source, which is going to be our video. We click on media source, and we're going to call this KCL video and press OK. 
Now we need to choose the file again. So we click on the browse button and we choose our animated logo video. We have a few choices with the video playback. We can loop our video. We can restart playback when we activate this scene again or we can show nothing when the playback ends. So essentially, we're going to use this file, we're not going to loop it, we're going to start it every time we go to this scene, and once we've finished playing the video, it's just going to show a blank screen, which is great. So we'll click OK. It's going to play this video for us, so we can just check it works, it's going to fade out and go to black. That's brilliant. So now we've got two scenes. Now we can switch between scenes and see what the different transitions are. So let's click on the first scene and it shows our logo. We now click on video and it plays our video. You'll notice that if I click on the logo while clicking on the video, you'll see that it fades between them with a duration of 300 milliseconds as indicated in the scene transitions. If I click where it says fade, I can choose between a cut, in other words, a direct cut from one scene to the next, or a fade of 300 milliseconds. There are other options, however, and if you click on the plus box, you can choose swipe, slide, you can play a stinger, in other words, a short video which summarizes your transmission, you can fade through color, or you can do what's called a luma wipe. Swipe is quite a nice effect. and If you choose swipe, you'll see you can swipe from left, from right, up or down. I'm going to choose up and press OK. Now if I fade between my scenes, the first scene disappears off the top of the page and the second scene comes in from underneath. So that's how you do some basic transitions and you can choose the different transitions and see which work for you. So now we've got our two basic setups, our logo, our animated logo, but as yet we've not done any teaching. So let's look at that side a bit now. You might want to talk to your video camera, in which case you better make a new scene, call it webcam, and add a source. The source we're going to add will be our video capture device. We're just going to call this video capture device, there's no point in relabeling it anything special, and click OK. You then have to choose which video capture device you want to use. I have two webcams here, so I'm going to choose this webcam. The camera should turn on and you'll see my face on the screen. You can choose what resolution you want to be able to use and the default is 720p and click OK. Now I'm on the screen, I can move myself around the screen anywhere I like, maybe make that a little bit bigger, place it in the center of the screen and now I can fade in between the KCL logo and my webcam picture. So now we've got the scene of a webcam. But what about a presentation? What if we want to give a PowerPoint presentation and include this in our video recording? So I'm going to head over to the right hand side of my screen where I've got a PowerPoint presentation open in PowerPoint. The easiest way to present a PowerPoint using OBS is to make sure your PowerPoint is presenting in a window and not full screen. To do this, go to Setup Slideshow and make sure that Browsed by an Individual window is selected. If you choose Full Screen, of course your PowerPoint will suddenly go full screen and you'll lose control of your OBS interface. So choose Window and press OK. Now you can start presenting by clicking on the Slideshow button and your PowerPoint presentation will start in a window within the PowerPoint application. Once you're in this position, you can set up OBS to see this window. So now we go back to our scenes and we set up our presentation by adding a new scene and typing in Prez, for instance. Press OK. We want to add a source to this presentation, so we click on Plus. And now we're going to use Window Capture because we want to capture the contents of the PowerPoint slideshow window. So we click Window Capture and we're going to call this PPT and press OK. Now we need to tell the software which window we wish to capture. So we click on the drop down list and it can be a long list so be careful about this to choose the right one but what we want to choose is the Microsoft PowerPoint 
PowerPoint slideshow with the name of our slideshow after it. And there we have it. There's our slideshow on the screen. We press OK. You'll notice it's also captured the very top of the window. So we can expand this so it fills the screen and just chop off the top so that our PowerPoint presentation sits nicely in the center of our screen. Now I can go to my logo. I can show the video. I can smile at my webcam and then I can show my presentation. And at the moment I can go between these very easily by clicking on them. I'm going to go back to a fade and I'm going to choose a thousand milliseconds. That's one second between each of my transitions. Now we're in a position to actually do some recording. So the first thing you need to do is look at your settings and make sure that you have the settings set correctly in the output section that you are saving your videos to somewhere where you're going to remember. I'm going to change this right now and have it on my desktop. I want to save this video on the desktop and I want to save it as an MP4. You have a choice, you can choose different formats, but MP4 is the most compatible. Something else you want to be able to do is go to your audio section and make sure that all that your devices are disabled in the devices list. What we want to do is we want to specify which audio we want to record and when we want to record it. So we need to make sure that audio is not being recorded all the time to disable all of these and press OK. So at the moment you'll know we have a KCL logo where our source is just the image. No audio will be recorded while this logo is showing. We then have our video and again only the video sound will be recording but no microphone input will be recording. Again with the webcam you can see my picture but you won't be able to hear my voice because no voice is being recorded. And again on my presentation, no voice. So I'm happy leaving the logo and the video without any voice recording, but I want some voice to go with my webcam and I want some voice to go with my presentation. So we click add source underneath the sources box and now we choose audio. We go audio input capture and we'll call this microphone. We choose a device from the drop down list which is going to be this one here which is my video microphone and I press OK. Now you'll see that these little VU meters are jumping up and down in the audio mixer for the presentation because that's going to record my voice. It's a little bit loud so I'm going to turn that down ever so slightly so it's not peaking in the red. So I now go to my webcam and do the same thing. Choose plus, choose your audio input capture, and you can select the existing microphone and press OK. And now as I'm recording this, looking at my webcam, you'll see that the VU meters are jumping up and down. So now we have everything set up. So when we start to record this as a screencast video, we will get all of this information recorded. It looks like it's quite a long winded way of setting these things up. But once you've set these up once, you can save this as a scene collection and come back to it later. So I can go up to where it says scene collection and this one is currently called new. So I can rename this one and I can call this simple presentation and press OK. Now you'll see at the top of the screen it says the profile is me and the scenes is simple presentation and you can reload this simply by going to the scene collection window and choosing simple presentation each time. So now we can start recording. We quite simply click on the start recording button and we're now recording this logo as a video file. Once we're happy that this is now up and running we may want to run our webcam, speak to the camera for a few seconds, everything's happy, everything's great and then you can run your presentation. Once your presentation is showing on the screen, you can keep talking, it's going to keep recording you, you move over to PowerPoint, and then you can cycle through your slides while recording your voice. Once you've finished your PowerPoint presentation, you might want to go back to your webcam, say a few words to your students, 
and when you finish recording, maybe run the logo, run the video, and then you press stop recording. Now what this has done is it's recorded a video where you've asked it to on your desktop. So here it is. I can double click on this video and load it up into my player and I can very simply scroll through. You can see the logo starts. I talk a bit to the camera. I give my presentation. Talk again. Show the logo. Show the video. And off we go. And just to convince you there is audio here. And then you can run your presentation. Once your presentation is... There we go. So this is a really good way of creating what I would consider very dynamic videos. If, for instance, you have some media within a presentation and it's just not working for you if you're presenting it, you may want to just add that as a scene. You can have a video playing independently to your presentation and you can be sure that it will run smoothly. So OBS is not a simple piece of software. It's actually very complicated and it takes a little bit of time to set it all up. But once it's set up, it is a very quick, easy and free way of making very good, robust screen recordings and multimedia presentations. I hope this helps.